Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning, Omonoba. Okay. Good morning, Maga. How are you doing, sir? Good to hear your good to hear your voice. Thank you, sir. I am searching for Oga AKJ. Should I invite him? Oh, okay, Oga, sorry. I had a call, so it affected my network. I think I missed it. Invite uh, Mr. Johnson. Okay, you can invite him, or you just call him to join. I need to know, are you, are you going to present from your end or you want me to display for you? I would like to be scrolling my slides. Oh, that would be wonderful. Okay. Did you hear? Yes, I will be scrolling my slide, but you will work with me. Don't just uh, leave me alone. <laughs> is, is that doctor, is that doctor can do? That's a monoba Daniel speaking. I was thinking, is that Dr. Okandu? Dr. Okandu is in the house. I'm seeing him. Let him speak. He doesn't Can want to speak. Help me call uh, Johnson in, please. Hello, help good me. Okay. Prof, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Who am I greeting? Dr. Okandu. Dr. Okandu, I just asked after you. Yeah, I had, I had it. Okay, we wanted you to speak so we can hear your your voice. <laughs> Welcome on board. <laughs> thank, thank you, sir. Yeah. We are set to go, right? I don't think so. Because it's already twelve o'clock. It's past only, it's past only nine past, only nine nine participants. Yeah, we can they will be joining us along the line. Okay. Uh, just Secretary, can I no just a minute? Let's wait for the president uh, to join. Okay. How are you doing this morning? I'm fine, and you? I'm good. Uh, good to see you. It's good to see you. <laughs> Bank color, right? Oh, these festivals are equal. Oh, festivals, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's good to see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, disabled participants screen sharing. Please, can you enable me to share my screen? Please, can you enable me to share my screen? You disabled me sharing screen, please. Secretary, did you hear Mr. Chinaka? Try, try it again, sir. Please, enable me to share my screen. I have disabled done that. Try it again. Share screen. Okay, you are a truthful person. I know you for long. Share. I am there, and if you permit me, it's better we keep to time. Good. Confirm you can see my presentation slides. Confirm. Thank you very Confirm. much. Ah, thank you very much. Where is Mr. Johnson? Please, uh, Omonoba, help me invite Mr. Johnson to this to this house, please. Can you come again, sir? Kindly help me invite Mr. Johnson to join. He's a co-presenter. Okay. Thank you. President, welcome. We are waiting for you. Let's hear you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, President. I greet you, sir. Good afternoon. Hello, do we have a coordinator? Well, uh, the coordinator. Uh, you know, sent a, a, a permission that uh, he will not be available today, remember? Yes, that's true. That's true. Is your team there? We are all set, right? Yes, we are all set. Okay. Thank you. I welcome you all to the fourth section of our knowledge sharing series. And uh, today we are having a panel who will be presenting for us today. And I hope that... Um, by God's grace, we'll be able to enjoy and the impact of um, the, their presentation today will go a long way to add value to us while we hold on for them to present. As usual, please let them do the presentations and thereafter the secretary will coordinate question and answer section. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Secretary, please, do you have their bell? Or is Mr. Um, Dr. Ukando in the house? Yes, he is in the house. 
Dr. Okando, please, can you present their bow before they start the presentation? Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Madam President, for giving me the honor to read their bios. I welcome all of us on board to Nigeria Chapter Session 4 Knowledge Sharing Series. We have three in our panel today. Mr. Chinna Kafibian Abakolam, who was a master's degree in environmental management from Bayero University, Kano, in 2011, and a second master's degree in disaster risk management and development studies from Amadubele University, Zaria, in 2014. Currently, a deputy manager in the health, safety, and environmental section of the research and development division of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. He has 29 years of experience in HSE, which entails initiating, planning, and successfully executing various HSE management strategies slash improvement initiatives for the overall proactive prevention of accidents, property damage, and environmental degradation, with the bottom line being increased productivity and revenue for NNPC and Nigeria. He is a member of American Society of Safety Professionals, fellow Institute of Safety Professionals of Nigeria, a chartered chemist, and member Institute of Chartered Chemists of Nigeria. And then others. The next presenter, Mr. Akeyemi K. Johnson, experienced HSC training consultant leader, 32 years in the oil and gas industry, worked as safety officer, accident prevention slash training supervisor, supervisor training, supervisor consultancy services, deputy manager PSM, manager HSEQ, membership with ESPON, ASSP, and the uh, Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineering, NSE, committed to ensuring that organization continually improve on their HSC culture for business continuity and sustainability. The last person on the panel, my big prof, Professor Ebo. Professor Ebo is a professor of petroleum environmental geochemistry in the Department of Pure and Applied Chemistry, University of Calabar. Currently in exploration, research and services section in exploration and production department of NNPC Research and Development Division. Port Harcourt. He holds a BSc, MSc, and PhD from the University of Calabar, Calabar, Nigeria in 2001. He has 24 years of experience in teaching slash research in petroleum and environmental geochemistry in the university, and six years in the oil and gas industry. He is a fellow in the UK Higher Education Academy and senior research fellow in petroleum geochemistry. International Association of Research Scholars and Administrators. His current research interest is on geochemical oil fingerprinting for exploration and production. HSE, EIA, and Waste Management Audit. He has won several awards and honors over the years and published several articles and books in both foreign and local journals. He has successfully supervised 10 PhD and two MSc students, has won several awards, honors over the years, and published several articles and books. He belongs to many professional bodies, such as Chemical Society of Nigeria, Association of Petroleum Explorationists, Institute of Chartered Chemists of Nigeria, and Nigeria Environmental Society. We welcome all of you on board, and we thank you all for honoring this invitation and to deliver this powerful paper titled Measurement of Organization, HSC Performance Using Safety Majority Model. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Dr. Okando. And I thank um, our presenters today. It's uh, an encouraging profile. Looking forward to getting so much from them. Over to you, presenters. Thank you. It's a honor being with you guys today. Thank you very much. And good afternoon, everybody. I just want to once again confirm that Mr. Johnson is in the house. 
Yeah. Yes. Hello. Okay. Yeah. This presentation yeah. is uh, made here by three gentlemen, as had been introduced. And it is entitled Measuring Organizations Health, Safety, and Environmental Performance Using the Maturity Model. There is so much noise. I wish you are hearing me. Let everybody mute their, their microphones and their videos so we can have a better network and communication. The discussion will go along these outlines. Number one among the outlines is that at the end of this brief discussion, we expect that there will be one or two things we will all learn from each other, both ourselves and your very highly regarded and respected selves. We will quickly do a brief introduction of the subject matter and go straight into the methods or the methodology that we recommend for measuring any organization's HSC performance. We will also present to us the safety maturity model that we are talking about. And at the end of this presentation, we'll draw some conclusions based on what has been presented. We expect that this forum will give us opportunity to share ideas with other HAC experts across the safety profession. Again, we expect there's going to be some level of knowledge that has been given out from us and we'll also gain some knowledge from you based on your questions and participation and information will be shared, especially it has to do with the model that we want to showcase here. And that is the model to be used in measuring organizations HSC performance. Now, before I quickly start rolling this, uh, this uh, slides and making my presentation from introduction downwards, I just want to ask if everybody is hearing me, just confirm that and I will actually keep rolling. Is everybody hearing me? I guess so. Oh, fine. Since you can hear me, so oh, thank you very much. Then, generally, what is thank you very much. In a very simple way, safety can be defined as a condition or state of being protected from harm. Is there anything that can harm you in your home? The answer is yes. What you put through your mouth can harm you, what you have around you can harm you in the office, yes. Between your house, your home, and the office, on the road, yes, marketplace, your places of worship, wherever humans find themselves, there are inherent conditions that have the potential for harm. Property can be destroyed, environment can be degraded. And if you are able to recognize these conditions and do not allow them to release their potential, that is safety. Many organizations, many organizations' corporate image has been dented. When you hear a particular company that has gone in flames, I am very sure you will not like to associate yourself with such a company that today there is fire outbreak. The other day there was another fire outbreak in that company. Or people are getting injured or even killed. But as I speak to you, so many organizations have got their corporate images dented by accidents. Some of them have got their bottom line eroded. Some are battling with heavy fines due to litigation, and so a lot are paying high insurance premiums. All these untoward things are due to occurrences of accidents, or disabling e-health, or death of workers because of prevailing unsafe conditions of work at, and other environmental factors. We are now taking this discussion to the workplace because companies are established to maximize profits. I was told this in my elementary commerce and economies that business is about maximization of profit. Now, if you are establishing your business to maximize profit and your business is provide, you know, producing any of these things we have stated before now, 
I am sure you did not bargain for all that. While the general business performance of an organization is subject to a range of positive measures, measures for health and safety, it too often comes down to one negative measure. And what is that? Injury and ill health. The statistics of injury or ill health are regarded as measures of failures. HSE performance measurement is one of the elements of health, safety, and environmental management system. The framework of HSE, if you look through the entire framework, along the line, you will see that HSE performance is part and parcel of that framework. HSE performance measurement determines whether the HSE MS is operating according to expectations and requirements. The traditional approach to measuring HSC performance. In research, when you establish that something is existing, you conduct further search into what has already been in place and then step up the game by way of adding value. We intend, the three of us in this presentation, to first of all state the traditional approach which you and me have been using to measure HSC performance. Then we will migrate from that traditional approach to the model that we are brandishing here. If chief executive officers were asked how they measured their company's performance, they would probably mention measures like percentage profit, return on investment, or market share. A common feature of the measures quoted will be that they are generally positive in nature, reflecting achievement rather than negative or reflecting failure. If the same people were asked how they measured their company's health and safety performance, your guess is as good as ours. It's likely that the only measure quoted will be, oh, injury statistics. So what is important in this discussion, ladies and gentlemen? One, what is required is a basket of measures or a balanced scorecard, which provides information on a range of health and safety activities. And organizations, as organizations recognize the importance of managing health and safety, they become aware of the problems with using injury and health statistics alone as the only measure of HSC performance. It's not just about injury statistics alone, ladies and gentlemen. So why do you measure performance? You measure performance, oh, you do appraisal, you want to do your performance appraisal of your staff in line of productivity, in line of this, in line of that. What about HSC performance? Can I quote Peter Drucker? Beginning of quote, you can't measure what you can't, you can't manage what you can't measure, end of quote. You cannot manage what you cannot measure. Are you managing HSC in your organization as a safety manager HSC, general manager HSC, safety officer, or whatever designation your company has put on you? If you cannot measure what you are managing, can you actually manage well? That's a poser for me and you. Can I also take your, uh, ask for your indulgence to allow me to quote Yogi Berra. Quote and unquote, Yogi Berra says, if you don't know where you are going, the chances are that you're going to end up somewhere else. And here we are face to face with why we measure HSC performance. Measurement is an accepted part of your plan, do, check, apps, as well as, as an integral part of HSC MS. Framework for managing health and safety is illustrated in figure one, which you will soon see. And that figure shows where measuring performance fits within the overall health and safety management system. Here is the HSCMS key elements, policy, organizing, planning and implementing, 
And of course, you can see clearly in the yellow color, measuring performance, then review performance. So you can see what we are saying that you need to measure performance and which performance are we referring to here? Health, safety, and environment performance. Why? The main purpose of measuring a company's HSC performances are to provide information on the current status of your HSE in your company. If I ask you, sir, ma, what is the current status of your HSE in your organization? I don't know how you will be able to give me an answer if you did not carry out a measurement. And your status is not just something you wish or how you look at it. It is against a background. So that is why we measure HSC performance. It will also give you information on the progress of strategies and processes used by the company to mitigate risks. Are there strategies in place? How far have they gone? Are we doing well or not? It is only when you measure that you can answer these questions. This lecture, as it is going, is rolling out questions, food for thoughts. And as you meditate on these questions as food for thought, the answers are provided in the discussion. And the answers are also provided by your very good selves. This information then, when you have it, is beneficial because it helps to determine how the company's HSC management system operates in practice, not just, oh, we have said it, oh, we have written it. In practice, how far? I to identify areas where remedial action is needed and provide feedback and motivation. It to provide a basis for making process. Deciding where the company is relative to where they want to be on the culture ladder. We are going to tell you that HST is a culture if it is live in any organization, or rather said, should be a culture. And in the culture of HST, there is a dedicated ladder. You can yes, find on the first rung of the ladder, or your organization has migrated from the first yes. rung of the to the second, from the second to the third, from the third to the fourth and the fifth. So where are you along this culture ladder? What progress is necessary and reasonable given to the circumstances of your organization? How that progress might be achieved against constraints and restraints, such as time, such as resources, such as force majeure and other untoward uh, occurrences. Priorities and effective use of resources will also you know, actually show themselves when you measure your HSC performance. What is this culture ladder? We are saying, if all of us that are listening to this presentation move down to company A as we speak, and we carry, we, we carry out a sort of measurement of their safety performance, Company A might just be at the pathological level, which is the, 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 the very basic level of HSC performance. Some companies that are still operating at that level do not even have an HSC department, no HSC operative. Anybody there feels that he knows or understands HSC, whereas HSC is both science and an art. And it's only for professionals to come and do what they know how to do best in the organization. That you don't have a unit or a department or personnel overseeing HSE functions, or that you have, and they are not properly equipped by way of training and development. You might be surprised that you are just like you have either, either not begun or at pathological level of, your, of the HSE culture. You go to company B, it's also very possible that, oh, we have one and two or three things put in place for HSC. Uh, but we, what happens is that whenever we have an accident, we, we react to it. See, that is a reactive level, a reactive culture. 
which is not recommended. You don't wait for it to happen before you begin to put measures in place. We go to company C. I'm just saying we're doing a mental exercise, all of us. I don't know how many of us are in this group now. We go to company C and we measure, okay, we are 22, but we are, we are 33. We measure HST performance in that company C. Oh, company C would have left the pathological level, would have also put structures in place that have migrated them from the reactive level of the HSE culture to the calculative level. But they are not yet there. The journey continues because you want to get to the, re, to the proactive level where you don't wait for it to happen. You put measures in place. Measures such as HSCMS must be and driven by the CEO of every organization. Now we move on. HSC performance measurements are used as tools to help prevent workplace accident, injury, disease, and fatality. It's a measure, it's a means to verify the safety performance of the organization and to validate the effectiveness of the HSC risk controls. The safety performance shall be verified in reference to safety policy and approved safety objectives, safety performance targets using dedicated key performance indicators. I want to mention some key performance indicators that are very important. What will you see? And that will tell you, oh, this company is doing this or that for HSC. What is the percentage HSC equipment availability in company XYZ? You state it down. What is the record of fire incidents? Oh, we produce fire incidents as often as we like. You tick, I don't know what you tick, whether you tick good or bad for such company. But these are indicators of how a company is performing. Do you have emergency response capability? The response can be yes or no. Can you demonstrate it? Do you carry out a check on the equipment for emergency? Do you do fire drill? and other drills? Do you have any team that reviews your HSC performance? Can you show me your HSC plan? Do you monitor even the plan and the performance of the plan? Is the plan approved by whom? Do you conduct HSC training? HSC training should be conducted for HSC operatives and as well as every person that is in the organization, ladies and gentlemen. Can I look at your incident reporting and investigation? Do you circulate learning from incidents once there's any incident? Can I look at your medical treatment cases? Are there any number of fatalities? We don't wish to have any fatality. That is why we are doing this discussion, so that you take this message home, you conduct the measurement yourself, you develop a model for your company, your organization, and you run with it. Number of HSC audits carry out, number of lost time injury cases, number of lost workday cases, number of restricted workday cases, all these are key performance indicators. Number of unsafe acts and safe conditions reported and presented closeouts. Personal protective equipment compliance, show me the record. Total recordable incidents, HSM is in place. If no, or if yes, that will tell you whether the company is performing or not. Can I look at your HSC policy? Is it signed by the chief executive officer of the company? Is it current? Or was it the one signed by the third generation of your CEOs and you have not updated it? The HSC manager's meeting, does it hold? Management HSC committee, is it in place, chaired by the CEO? Do you have a journey management plan, environmental management plan, waste management plan? All these and many more are your key performance indicators. And of course, these indicators measure HSC performance. 
Trends should be analyzed and constantly corrective action should be identified after detecting and any detecting any deterioration of specified safety levels. Here are five questions to answer or to ponder on. We will throw them out here as you are seeing this, the slides, as you are seeing the PowerPoint presentation. Number one says, where are we? This we now is your company where you work. Where is your company relative to the overall HSE aim and objectives? Are we controlling hazards and risks? It is the answer you give that will place that company where it is on the culture ladder. How do we compare with others? Yes, you have pairs. So how do, do you compare your safety performance with similar organizations? And then where are we where we are? So where are you? Are you at the pathological level? That is the diseased condition. Have you migrated from pathological level to the next rung of the ladder where you are waiting for incidents to happen, for accidents to happen, and you react that is reactive? Are you at the calculative? That is the third, because there are five levels. So where are you? Or are you at the fourth, where you are actually proactive? That's our recommendation. But the fifth one is regenerative. In the regenerative HSC performance, any company that is already there, all they do is HSE. And when you mention that company's name, what rings in anybody's ear is not what the company do. But safety, if I ask you to unmute yourself now and mention one company or two or three that you know in Nigeria that once you mention their name and the next thing that will come to us is safety, me and you know whom to mention. But that is just a question for us to ponder on. Are we getting better or worse over time? Is our management of HAC efficient and effective? Are we doing things right? and doing the right things? Are we leaving HSC to the management alone or is everybody involved in it? Or are you waiting until you are deployed to the HSC department section or unit before you can even think that safety is also your business as it is everybody's business? So what do we measure, ladies and gentlemen? In order to achieve an outcome of no injuries, or work related in health and satisfy stakeholders, health and safety risks needs to be controlled. Effective risk control is founded on an effective health, safety, and the management system, HACMS. You have the input, you have the process. You have the failures. The input measures are measures of the accident body. The process are come if you are producing accidents. Here I want to quickly discuss the safety maturity model. And this is the model that should be used in measuring HSC performance. It is new, it is recent, it's trending, and we expect you to be the first to deploy it in your company. The maturity model concept is a recent research innovation within the discipline of safety management and has been applied to safety culture development within several high hazard industries, such as the offshore, aviation, rail, and petrochemical industries. The best way of knowing the status of your current safety culture is to assess it. You cannot manage what you cannot measure. And you compare your findings against the safety culture that is linked to actual safety performance. A safety culture maturity model is a model that describes stages of safety culture development based on previous work. The model uses an ordinary scale to outline evolutionary steps that organizations can use to measure and evaluate several elements involved in production. The maturity model framework places safety culture on a continuum from poor, that is the, 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 the pathological level, to good and therefore facilitating the identification of indicators for each level of maturity. Two of the more common cited maturity levels are those subsequently developed by Fleming and that of Hudson. Fleming's model 
looks at the level of maturity across 10 elements of safety culture. These are the 10 elements. And the five levels of maturity we have been discussing and mentioning here I have shown you. The descriptions of each stage of safety culture can also be given below. This we have been discussing in this uh, presentation. This is just a kind of pictorial representation of what we have been saying. At the imagine level, oh, your performance of HAC based on your KPIs is poor. Safety is not seen as a key business, uh, business risk. All we want to do is produce, produce, produce at the detriment of people's health and safety. At the second level, you may be improving. That is where you are reacting. Uh, production takes priority over safety. Company only concerned about safety immediately after an accident. At the third level, let me better show you here. You see uh, the third level is in yellow. The first and second are in red. The third one is in yellow, showing that you have left the red zone. At this level of the yellow, you have also left the dependence level. You are now at, in fact, both the second and the third are dependent. It's only when you are migrating to the fourth that you are at independence. But at the third level, you are calculative. That has been said several times. All staff are engaged to develop cooperation and commitment to improving safety. Production sometimes takes priority over safety. Sometimes. Not always again, as in two. Of course, the fourth level is where you have interdependence. Where you, have, you are still independent. Where you have independence. Independent means staff is not waiting for management to actually enforce HSC. Every staff is carrying his or her HSC with him or her. We said you are exceeding, you are leading, you are proactive. Development of consistency and you are fighting complacency. You have commitment to HSC and it is visible. HSC takes priority over productivity. See, this statement of HSC and productivity, one taking priority over the other, is not a suggestion. It's, it's, it's a recommendation that safety should take priority over productivity. And the reason is simple. If you are injured, you cannot be productive. If you are killed, you cannot be productive. If you are ill, you cannot be productive. Therefore, safety should take priority over productivity. And of course, if the company is operating at the generative level, we said all they do is HSC, and HSC becomes a value in that culture, uh, in that uh, organization. Safety partnership is established. Lessons learned are apl applied on day-to-day -day basis. HSC is linked to business productivity. And so, in every production meeting, HSC will be discussed there's one thing we did not even mention in the key performance indicators, what they call HSC brief. For every meeting, immediately after the, the opening prayer, the next item on the agenda is HSC brief. And of course, the HSC brief will present if there is any dedicated response uh, program for any emergency in that company. And different companies have their own programs based on what they do, based on their environment, and then how to respond. That is an opportunity to keep reminding people. It's just like you are inside an aeroplane. Before they take off, they will not say, oh, I saw you in this plane today. You flew from Potako to Abuja in the morning. And in the same flight, they are flying back from Abuja to Potako the same day. And you listened to our HSC brief, there's no need repeating it. They don't do so. They keep repeating it and repeating it for every flight takeoff. That is how HSC brief should be repeated to the same people, to the same meeting, every time the meeting is about to start. It's a culture, ladies and gentlemen. Methodology. So what methods are we going to deploy 
there are two methods. One of the methods is the subjective assessment. And the second is objective assessment. In the objective assessment of any company, you gather secondary data. You look at various indicators, just like we have mentioned. There are so many. But in the subjective assessment, your primary data is gotten through questionnaires, through interviews. You interview management, middle management, staff. You carry out consultations with key functionaries in that organization. You do your own physical observations and your personal experiences, especially if you are the head of HSC in that organization. All that will be your method of measuring HSE. In subjective assessment method, the statements in the questionnaire must reflect the 10 elements that we showed you from the beginning. Management commitment and visibility, there should be a question or questions on that. Communication, when you are designing your questionnaire, productivity versus safety, learning organization, is it is this organization a learning organization? Do they, what are the safety resources in place? Participation, shared perceptions about safety, trust, industrial relations and job satisfaction, training. So by the time you throw this questionnaire across the strata of workers in that organization, their responses will guide you uh, in drawing up necessary conclusions and placing that company where they belong on the cultural ladder. The statements in the questionnaire must be related to safety maturity index as a measure of company's performance. One, culture. Two, compliance. Three, capital. Capital in this case can be technology, can be human capital, can be fund, and other capital. The statements in the questionnaire must be put in a random order. Each time you throw such a questionnaire, you don't design the questionnaire as if as the person is answering the questions, it is leading him or her to where you want to arrive. No, you place the questions in a random order that does not show any pattern. So that the person will give you honest answers that are very objective. That will help you come out with the true position of such an organization as far as HSC is concerned. The ranking of the data extracted from respondents use ordinary scale one to four. That's what the three of us did. The presentation we are making here is a result of a research we carried that in a company we labeled company X. The ranking is based on the relative importance index. According to NSSI and others in 2009, RII is a commonly used method in construction companies to obtain priority rankings of attributes. And it is particularly useful where a structured questionnaire is used to solicit measurements that are subjective in nature. The reference here is Chang and others in 2000. The average, the mean, item score for each factor within groups we are calculated. We did that to obtain relative importance index. And this is the formula we used. Based on the data you get, you put in your number of respondents for a little, that is N1. Just look at the formula put what you have here, where the big N is the total number of respondents, or you sent out questionnaires to 250 people. Out of that 250, 222 responded. So that becomes N, N is your 222. If you put it into that formula, it is very easy for you to get an answer. Then you analyze your whatever data you have gotten. So for us, we used statistical package, SPSS version 21.0 software package. First, we use simple descriptive statistical measures to describe our data. And secondly, in order to explore possible relationship between the factors, we use Spearman's bivariate and partial correlations. We want to show you here 
the average RII values for the three safety factors in the company we carry that are research. Remember the, the, the factors are once again, safety culture, compliance with safety culture, and then compliance or availability of capital. And of course, capital represents the human capital technology fund. These three principal components of a successful safe workplace, which we are ranked using relative importance index as 0 0.8, 0 0.80, and 0 0.79 respectively, classify company X as having an effective HACMS. Mm -hmm. On that HACMS, this result places this particular company well, effective, good. Remember, we are looking at a model that have five levels. There's a company you will plot their statistics, their data, secondary or primary, objective or subjective. And what you will get can give you 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.4. If that is the case, of course, that company will fall either at the first or second rung of. This is just some of the questionnaires that we are thrown out. I'm sure you may not see all the details here, but uh, it's important to show you that this is what was done. Of course, you also go ahead and plot this. When you look at this figure, on your left-hand side is the vertical axis for respondents. The horizontal axis is the response they gave. The top manager or his or her deputy have met plans for creating communications and holding meetings regarding HAC and they implement that plan. The result we got shows uh, you could not put the hand in. that yeah. the mean RII for culture, like we stated before, was 0 0.80. There are certain mechanisms for participation of the employees in the HAC plans, and they contain the evidence and records to implement them in an effective and proper way. You also have your response. So you don't just come to a company and say, from what I'm seeing, it's looking like this company HAC is here or there. No, it is here that by the time you put, bring your parameters, your data, your everything and put it in there, you will see those who said very much, average, much, a little, and then you plot it. This figure is showing the respondent's perceptions about HAC culture. This factor was ranked in the first position among the three factors with RII 0 0.8, with 78.8% of the respondents responding to the questions as very much and much. And what does that indicate? That this very company we did this research for HSC, uh, we measured their HSC performance, has a strong safety culture priority. Here is a web representation of what we have just said. Excuse me, let me just take liquid. Thank you. Here is a web representation. At culture one <clears throat> is the highest point, while the lowest point is at culture 18. What does that, what does that mean? In the entire from question one to question 21 in the questionnaire that was sent out and the responses we got. You see from 0 0.00 to up through 0 0.20, 0 0.40, 0 0.60 to 0 0.80. You go to your right-hand side, you see culture one. Relative importance index equals 91. What, what are we saying here? The subjects regarding HAC are high of high, import, of high importance in the general meetings of the company. Like we told ourselves, oh, this meeting cannot start unless after the opening prayer, we do the HSC brief. Apart from the HSC brief that talks about emergency response, 
we share some HSC information, which they call safety moment. This is a culture that every organization has to run with. You come to two, the regular meetings with, pre with predetermined time periods are held to specifically study the issues related to HSC. The working relationship of authorities of HSC unit is good with other departments. There's linkages from the HSC section to other department sections, staff. HSC is not working in silos. At the end of the day, you draw conclusion. This web or spider diagram shows the result from culture factor, showing safety culture strengths and weakness. The strength is in culture one question, the weakness is in culture 18 question. Same for compliance. And you just have to go through culture compliance capital. And then you still keep getting your responses. Methodology for measurement of organizations HAC performance. To review the safety culture of the organizations, we are looking at the key performance indicators. Example is what we are showing you for the job we did in company X. We wish you can do and do a similar job in company A, company B, company C, as the case may be. For company X, established in 1977, from the day it was established to 19, to 1992, the record we obtained is that there was no HSC equipment in the company, but they were operating. Cases of fire incidents were not recorded. Does not mean that they were not having fire incidents. Emergency continues. From 1972 to 2006, one or two things started creeping in, but actually from 2006, oh, I can see emergency response capability available. And this is the first time they had safety officer, safety unit in that company that I've been operating since 1977. It's in 2006 that such a company established a safety department. Oh, you can, they are now, can show record of a HSC performance review, HSC plan and monitoring and all that. It continues till today. The HSC policy also came in place within that time bracket. And of course, we could gather that from 2012 to 2014, the record that was kept since they started keeping record showed seven cases of fire incidents. Of course, measures were put in place from that 2014 to date that the record of fire incidents has been zero continuously. It's an organization we know, and this record is true of that organization. Medical treatment cases, three were recorded between 2012 and 2014, but as we speak, the record they have is zero, nil. Number of HSODs were started carrying out, they did eight from 2012 to 2014, and so on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is typical of any company. You need to plot the HSC performance indicators against the actual the raw data that you get from that company. You don't just walk through and say, our company is doing well for HSC. This is not audit. This is research. And you don't end it there. You now do statistical analysis of uh, all that you have got. The results of statistical analysis for company has show that culture, compliance, and capital are positively and significantly correlated. In another company, it may not flow along that line. They are cor significantly correlated with preference of HAC over productivity. That is what we recommend. And of course, the result we got from statistical analysis shows 
that R equals 0 0.543, 0 0.819, and 0 0.864. And this indicates a strong safety management system that enhances staff performance and productivity. If safety is live and operational in, every, in any organization, productivity will be enhanced. So you use both subjective assessment and objective assessment to develop a safety maturity model for any organization that uh, you need to do that for. We did this for company X and we plotted control of risk on the vertical axis and culture strength on the horizontal axis. The strength of the culture is as you move along the culture ladder from pathological to reactive to calculative to proactive to generative. That's the strength you can see. If the control of risk using the key performance indicators is looking good, you have decreasing injury rates, increasing consistency in production, low down times, improving safety culture, it is still. I have taken your time, but it is for all good of all of us. But at the end of the day, some conclusions we are drawn once again by three of us. One, assessment of an organization's safety performance can be made by evaluation of the effectiveness of that company's HSMS through subjective and objective methods. Remember your subjective and objective methods? Questionnaires, survey, interviews, name them, and then data. Two, based on the results of the assessment, you now develop model, safety maturity model. So safety maturity model for one company you know, is not necessarily going to be the same maturity level for another company. And we must tell ourselves, at whatever maturity level you find that company, there must be deliberate activities to sustain it, otherwise it will begin to flow downwards. It's not automatic, oh, we have developed a model and we find ourselves uh, on the uh, proactive level. Congratulations, we clap for you. And that was in 2009. From 1st January, sorry, 2019, from 1st January 2020 to today, 30th of July 2020, if you do not sustain all the indices, everything that has been said, you will fall back from your um, proactive maturity level to calculative, if not, even falling back to reactive because when something now happens, you wake up from your slumber and begin to investigate and begin to say, oh, it shouldn't have happened. At this point, the three of us, myself, Mr. Chenaka, Fabian Abakolom, Professor Basi of Young Ekbo, and uh, Engineer Johnson Kubina Akiyemi, are profoundly grateful to the American Society of Safety Professionals, ASSP, for which I am a proud member, for the opportunity given to us to make this presentation and to the, the exciting audience that we are seeing here, 34 men and women listening to us quietly, taking notes. We thank you one, we thank you all. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Did learning take place? I don't know. It is you that will tell us. I believe learning took place. But I will also want to share in two minutes this discussion to tell you that I'm not here to deceive anybody. Just two minutes. Well done, thank you, sir.
prof. You are wonderful. He said, God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. I think there's network interference now. No, not really. The presenter asked for a few minutes. Okay. Hello, are we there? Yes, we are with you. Did you watch, did you hear the audio of the video clip? We didn't hear anything, sir. Okay, I did not share the video clip. Oh, I was playing mm -hmm. it to myself. It's, uh, it's just a two minute video clip to support the presentation I made that I am not here to deceive anybody. You can also, I have a witness that is also saying what I was saying. Let me share it, if you permit me. Do I have your permission? Yeah, please go ahead. You can unshare the present one and share the video. Uh -huh. Oh, unshare now. New I... share. New share. You now go to the video. Where is it now? This is the movie. So you share it. Okay, you play it. So I was just enjoying it alone since. So can you see it now? Yes. Confirm you are seeing it. Yes, sir. Yes. Confirm. Yes. 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 What of the audio? Are you hearing the audio? Yes. yes. Oh no, no, not yet. Yes. Yes. No audio. I haven't seen any video. I don't know if it's only me. Well, what would happen, sir? You send it to media, so we'll attach it to the records for everyone to be able to assess it. Let me stop it now. We are not, yeah, we are not, not stop it. Yeah, we're not hearing the audio. Okay, I would tell you my- just, You send it to media alongside and it will be uploaded. Okay, so I better stop it now and hand over to you. Thank you. Well done. Uh, uh, questions waiting at the chat room before the secretary coordinates the question and answer section. I would like him to present the certificate. Yes, sir. Look, it's so bad. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Bakolo. Uh, if not, I don't have the capacity to confer PhD. Maybe I will have added it. Uh, but uh, good as it may, this certificate is uh, to the three. When we are sending it, we are going to break it down individually. But uh, on behalf of ASSP Nigeria chapter, to present this certificate to Professor B. O. Epo. A.K. Johnson and C.F. Abakolom for volunteering in ASSP Nigerian chapter as joint speakers on measurement of organization HSA performance using safety maturity model during the knowledge sharing series 4 of July 30th, 2020. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time.
and the knowledge that you say, you, say, you have shared with us so far. The title is measuring, not measurement. Measuring. Okay, so thank you. So it's not that now, correct? Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Ah. So we go into the question and answer session. So if you have any question, please raise your hand. Let's recognize it. So guys, please also go through the chat. I think I have I have seen uh, one or two questions, so you take it as well. Uh, just a minute, I'm trying to scroll through the chat and Okay, uh, there's a question from uh, Frank Ibi. He said, please, where is reactive in the level of maturity? I can't see pathological in level one and level two. Yeah, um, you want us to respond to that? Yes, you can go ahead, sir. Okay, um, you are talking about reactive. Are you saying, what is the question, that where is what? Because, uh, please, where is reactive in the level of maturity? I can't see pathological in level one and two. Okay. Pathological is you are not you are you are, you are, you are in a diseased condition. No safety, no this, no unit. Nobody is even thinking about it. Safety does not exist in that company. Like the company we started, the example that came on board, nineteen uh, oh oh, when any of us was not born. No safety, whatever. Two thousand and six. So at that point. When you are reacting to whatever accident that has taken place, fire accident, electrical accident, sleep, and of course, near miss is being recognized and recorded, you are at the reactive level of maturity. You have left the pathological, the basic, where there was no safety mention, safety was not considered in production, you are now conscious. There's some level of safety consciousness, but it is at a stage you are reacting to incident, but that is not where you want to be, which is the second maturity level. The third maturity level is that you have left reactive, you are in calculative. If you listened, okay, that is the essence of that uh, video. You would have had a witness talking to us. I will send the will upload the video to you, talking about oh, management is driving safety, forcing staff against their will. But no, we have moved from that stage where both management and staff are cooperating to drive safety. And of course, you are calculating, moving towards from your living reactive to proactive. We want your maturity level to exist and remain at the um, proactive level. Proactive means you have put every measure in place and you are driving the process to make sure nobody is injured, equipment is not destroyed, environment is not degraded. And the last, which is the best place to be, is the generative level. There are five of them. So reactive is at the second level. If that is the question, reactive is at the second level. The first level is pathological. Thank you. Uh, Thank you sir. Yes, sir. Uh, can you show them the slide, you know, where you have the different levels of the uh, safety culture on the ladder? Share, share your slide. Share. 
share your screen. And uh, here is the presentation. You share it, put it in presentation mode, slide mode. And you quickly go there. Okay, you can stop here and then use it now. So that's so, where the second level is, you know. After reactive, basic reactive, you know, which is the... Uh, plant proactive resilient. That answers the question. This is the answer to the question. Over to you, controller. Thank you, sir. So can we have more questions? Can raise your hand, let's recognize you, or unmute yourself, introduce, and then ask your question. Okay, Mr. Frank, go ahead. Unmute yourself and let's hear you. Mr. Frank, unmute yourself. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Can you can you go back to that slide again? That uh, level of maturity. I noticed that uh, on that uh, level, that's That uh, level. That's my. That's the question I actually sent on the chat. Hello, do you hear my Hello. question, sir? Yeah, now no, I going. think you were waving. It's better now. You can ask again. Hello. You can ask the question sir? again. Yes, Mr. Frank. You can ask the question again. Your network was interfering. In order for us to move forward, I think at level two, under it, you see the reactive. So maybe you can just, you can just take the, the answer from there, sir. Myself, are you seeing me? No, 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 I'm, I'm not, not to you, to Mr. Frank. Mr. Frank, can we hear you? Are you there? I think he's having network issues. He was particular about, uh, where the reactive level is, and if you have it under the le okay. pathological level. I will, be, I will be glad if he's hearing me so that I can say one or two key things. Go ahead, sir. I don't know how, okay, let Hello? him confirm in the chat box that at least he's hearing me. Uh, if he's hearing yeah, I can me hear. or whoever uh, is uh, fine. You see, there is red. He can hear you. Go oh, ahead, fine. sir. There is a, a box painted in red, written basic. That is level one, pathological disease. And we have explained everything that goes around that company. As far as HSC is concerned, productivity is giving preeminence over safety practices. No HSC policy. No HSC policy. No HSC policy. No HSMS in place. All the key performance All indicators. Key performance indicators. That, this is I don't know. And that we have enumerated. No one is existing there. But when consciousness start building up, you are now at reactive level where, oh, 
accidents happen and the company carries at least keep a record of the accident that has happened. Near misses are being recorded. Somebody is injured, it is being recorded and investigated. And possibly they are not even uh, circulating learning from incidents. Possibly they are not even dis discussing it in their meetings and all that. These things are not like there's a very clear cut line, but it's a guide to say, if you are doing this, you can still do this to migrate from where you are. So if your question is about, oh, I'm seeing uh, level one basic, I'm seeing level two reactive, the red shows they are not doing well. That company is not doing well for HSC. And you cannot come to the company and say your company is not doing well for HSC if you did not in any way carry out a measurement. And that measurement has to be scientifically carried out using this model. It is at the end of the day, you model that company and you say you are at reactive or you are between, you can also sandwich between level one, level two, because there are certain indices, there are imperatives. You gather your primary data, you do survey, you do interview, you carry consultation, carry a consultation with key functionaries in that organization, you carry out observations, you carry personal experiences, you gather data, secondary data, your KPIs, you analyze the data, you explore possible relationships. Is there a correlation between culture, compliance, and capital? By the time you do all this, you will place that company and say, you have almost left the basic level. You are in reactive, but some of the basic, because I told you, you can move up and come down. You can go up and come down if it's not sustained. So there's no clear cut line. You say, bam, here is this company is at basic. This company is at reactive. It is the data you get, and you plot it. But I don't think the drawing here should be more of a concern than if I ask you, did learning take place? Can you go to company W and model their HSC performance and place them? If you can, then learning has taken place. Over to you. Uh, sorry, before it comes in, Mr. Fabian and, uh, the, uh, and our esteemed associates, I have observed from this slide what he's trying to mention. If you notice, we have level one pathological, level two pathological, then you go to cumulative, proactive, and generative. So this slide will be changed because level one there is pathological, level two is not pathological, but rather reactive. It's to delete pathological from level two. Yes, yes, and then put reactive there. The reactive is already you know, there. It's just to delete pathological from level two, and then everybody and, will be happy. And put reactive, yes. Because you're having level one pathological, level two pathological. That shouldn't be. If that makes anybody, everybody happy, I am here to do what you want me to do. Next question, if any. OK, thank you. There's a question from the chat. Thank you for I, your input. As uh, Opara, you said, who should carry out measurement of safety maturity, external body or HSC team? That is, a, that is another good question. The first question we treated is very good and excellent. Like we said, three of us are here to share with you. Again, from you, you gain from us. So we have learned something. This second one is another good question. A very good question. You must have the act. You must have the science. It's not casting concrete whether an external person should come and do it. Yes, if that external person have the prerequisites. If the internal person have the prerequisites, fine and good. Anyone, Mr. Johnson, can you, can, can you also lend your voice on this? But my response is that the, whoever is doing it must be qualified, whether external or internal. Mr. Johnson, please, contribute. Hello? What is happening? Okay. While we are waiting for you, we can take another question. Okay. So that ask, one... him whether, ask him whether he is home and dry with our response. Okay. Uh, please, Charles, if you are, just uh, drop a message on the chat box. But he has another question. Is there, please, is there a basic template for HSEMS to accommodate all industries 
for example, the maritime industry. My response, honest response to this is that I don't know. My honest response to this question is I don't know. I can only recommend that the template you have, you see if you can apply it in the maritime industry, if it can fit into the system. It's a management system. But one thing is very clear. There is a, gener a, gen a generic template, and then you can tailor it to the operations of that particular company, be it in transportation, marine industry, aviation, oil and gas, construction. You carry the generic template, and then you now operating. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. I think uh, Dr. Johnson was thrown out. He's back now. So you can put the needed contribution to him. Yeah, Mr. Johnson, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. I have uh, attempted to answer the question, but I needed you to, to lend your voice. The question is, the person has enjoyed the presentation, and I can see a desire to deploy this activity or to develop a model for a particular company. And then the question is, should I do it? Should I get an external body to do it for my company? My response is, if you have the, the prerequisites, if you are qualified, if you have the art and the skill, fine. Otherwise, even the outsider coming must, first of all, showcase his credentials, he must be qualified to be able to do this. So I thought you should, uh, you should uh, come in here, please. Okay, I concur with your answer to the question. Again, it's just like uh, you are doing your audit exercise. You have your internal auditors, you can also bring external auditors to uh, do your audit, carry out the audit processes for you. So again, if the competence is resident in company, why not? Again, where uh, the expertise is not there and then you want the exercise to be done for you, you reach out to professionals who have the competence to support you and then let the organization define their uh, HSC culture level, you know, based on what we have shared in this presentation today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, there's no more questions, so I will at this point hand over to the president. Thank you very much. Hello, are you hearing me? Yes, madam, we are hearing you. Okay. Thank you all for finding time to join us today. At least this is the last section for oil and gas presentation for July. It was a wonderful session and we're going to have all our presentations loaded on the website within two to three days maximum for us to assess the materials. Special thanks to Prof. Epo and the team for a wonderful presentation. You took us through the process of what we need to put in place to promote the safety culture in our organization and the responsibilities for us safety professionals in ensuring that various areas that needs to be addressed are looked into using the various KPIs and the model methodology you have put in place in auditing our workplace and to ensure safe work practice in our organization. We really, really thank you. Thank you all for attending to these sections. Thank you once more to the presenters. On behalf of uh, the coordinator for oil and gas, which is an uh, unavoidably accent to take the last section, Mr. Eka Nisika, I want to say thank you on his behalf. And for our coordination, coordinator for education and training chair, Dr. Ukando, and the entire executive of this chapter here, we say a big thank you to you all for constantly joining us for this section. To all the presenters for July, we really appreciate your volunteering. 
to our media team. You guys are wonderful. We are so pleased for your innovations. Please keep the flag flying. August is a, a month for construction specialties. And we encourage as many that still want to do presentations. We have our day's books already. But if you know you still have something, try and kindly reach the coordinator, Mr. Camille, who would be able to place you on the month. We'll be starting from August 1st, leaving this weekend for us to be able to enjoy the holiday. So August 8th will be our next section for construction. And we'll be having our first webinar for this chapter year, August 15th, by Tom Sinkrama from Canada. He will also be giving us a wonderful topic in the construction section. Please make it a date with us. Visit our website and all our presentations will be there for you to download and watch the recordings through the various presentations in our YouTube channel. For our Muslim brothers and sisters in the house, we say Baraka de Salah. And for all of us, happy holiday to us all. Looking forward to seeing you all in our next episode. Until then, please keep safe all the time. Thank you very much. Thank you, President. And please, we encourage our members to visit our Facebook page, like it. Uh, you, you'll be getting more updates both from WhatsApp, from the Facebook, our uh, YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Wow.